everyone, this is Zibo, and today is Wednesday, April 20th. Tomorrow is Thursday, and what are we doing today? We are doing Indie News, which is covering the care updates for the Garden Tales tomorrow. So the update notice just dropped 5 minutes ago, and in today's video, let us run through what to expect in the next update. So first of all, as usual, we will be getting a new hero. So the new hero this time is Ara the Sea Witch, which provides a defense plus 45%. A water support with a defensive party buff so looks like uh, the next bunch of units that are gonna rise up is probably gonna be water because from the history of garden tales i think units with this defense plus 45 percent has always been pretty useful in the arena itself so i i'm not expecting much less from ara i'm gonna like put my balls down that she's gonna be at least a decent unit in arena so that's that right and the story is over here but uh, it's in korean i'm not gonna translate it because uh, google translate can be a bit wonky and i'll include the description for her weapon over here in the right hand side as you guys can see so like i mentioned earlier because of how the party buffs within garden tales work i think defensive party buff in general they are much more suitable for colosseum contents they are much more suitable for story contents and they are much more suitable for arena contents like they don't provide damage for the team so they are not going to be good for raid they are not going to be good for game modes which requires you to do a lot of damage so I'm just going to put my prediction down. She's going to be like the next meta tanky support unit in the arena itself. Replacing arena possibly. Or even like um, being like the powerhouse that dominates the ladder. Like arena has been ever since her release. So that's my thought about Ara, And let us move on. So we get a new equipment, Octopus Basket. So it seems like she's like the, the, the god of the seas, right? <laughs> it's like a god of the seas kind of thing she has a lot of octopus play you know octopus waifus you guys get what i mean so so that's one thing and there's an english voice for demon shire's cow cloud so that's that we have a new floating comic for herself and yeah that's for the new heroes part no new story content that's just a new comic and in terms of the heroes and equipment improvement this part is always the part that i'm excited for so we have the resilience stat is a stat where the efficiency of the stat itself has dropped because of the amount of recovery is low compared to the amount of increase in stamina whenever the maximum level is expanded okay so resilience is basically heal right for those of you guys who are not too sure so what they're trying to mean is that the heal stats hasn't been improved with the increased level so healing efficiency has not been able to keep up and in general units with the heal inbuilt into them they are not benefiting too much from their heals right Kamel doesn't have a heal but Kamel is one of the best healer in the game because his healing scales with the hp so the more hp you have the more he heals and that's why he's gonna be like suitable efficient no matter what and we have other heroes so garam and orca's exclusive weapon skills have been improved so that they can hit targets from a little further away i don't know whether or not this is a good buff right like i mean garam is not the strongest arena unit but now he's gonna be a little bit more pesky gonna be able to shoot you down from like a little bit further away i'm not too sure how a little bit further away means but it doesn't really sound too good to me but then again whatever so increase the size of parvati's weapon skill okay to reduce misses fine increases kana stamina to increase her survivability so this is one of my favorite because i play kana myself so yep okay nice nice so here are all the heal heroes mia heal increase garam heal increase gabriel eleanor lorraine favi alba all got their heal numbers increased and then kana got a hp increase plus 98 base hp i think she'll probably be getting like a few thousand more maybe two to three thousand more by the end of everything so we shall I, i'll keep a lookout for this because i'll be using kana a lot so that's a i'll say like a not a very strong buff but uh, you know it's better than nothing right so that's one thing then we have thunder palace so this one oh they're in oh thunder palace is actually the thousand birds so this is garum exclusive weapon nemesis is orca's exclusive weapon so speed of cryogenic grenade by 12.5 percent so they didn't really increase the range i mean the range of uh weapon skill but the speed where the grenade drop increased by 12.5 so the last unit that got a uh, increase in their weapon skill speed is mark 2 and mark 2 became really powerful and i think with the past few buff to orca honestly speaking orca might be the up and coming range powerhouse honestly speaking like when this if, if this water tank works right if this water tank has anything that can 
beat your earth tanks or beat your earth units in general i think mono water might be the next up and coming thing because of like how strong orca has become and like them buffing garam to a certain extent so kind of excited to see whether or not the meta will shift in the favor of water because water has been pinned down by earth for the longest time possible and in masters arena if you're able to um ban out kamel and you're able to ban out mero then water teams have very very high win rates as well so that's what i observed so far playing the game mode and honestly speaking kind of excited to see whether or not the new hero the new water supportive tank unit plus debuffs to a really strong water units have a big impact on the meta then we have um, office supplies which is parvati's exclusive weapon so increases in projectile size by 50 percent i think it's much needed not gonna change too much maybe gonna make her a better weapon skill based hero but uh, right now, if water is a thing, I think Parvati is probably going to see more use as well. So I, it's like um, rock, paper, scissors kind of thing. And, you know, if people are banning up Mira and come out, right, they're going to leave out Parvati. So if water becomes a thing, who knows, maybe Parvati will be the up and coming counter unit for it. And that's that. So comments from the developer related to equipment improvements. Okay, so many drivers have exp uh, expressed their opinions. Uh, difficult to match options for mirror accessory. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll I'll make it simple for you guys, right? Instead of reading this, so the minimum stats on the mirror accessories, as well as the Alphaba small shoe, as well as the Martyr mirror necklace, they are very very low. So it's very hard for you to wash all the stats and lock them up and then continue to reset it until you get the optimal one because the range between the lowest number and the highest number is very big so by increasing the minimum number for the secondary options it makes it a lot easier to get good stats off martyr mirror necklace and save on the reset stones as well as the option lock stones and i think other than this right the major one will probably be for the mirror ones because the lower stat from 16 to 25 is um, okay. I mean, five stats difference is quite big because like sometimes if you don't lock certain stats, right, you get a high roll and the next thing you know, it becomes a super low roll and it's not very optimal. So yeah, this is definitely a welcome change, especially for the beginners. So higher stat increase to 27, a little bit higher, but still not going to match uh, Earth Necklace or Ice Cream Ring in terms of defensive stat, but still a good buff nonetheless. Then all these changes, so health minimum become 6%, defense minimum become 5%, damage reduction minimum become 20, skill damage minimum become 10. So just increase in the minimum stats you can roll for, making it easier for you to get optimal stats on your mirror accessories itself. So same thing for Alpha Bashu, maximum increase to 37 and minimum increase to 32. So I will say that uh, generally this is a good buff for free to play players because I think the mirror earring is probably one of the optimal free to play accessory that you can use for your end game arena battles or maybe even your other game modes. So if you are like a, not a big whale, right? I think mirror earring is one thing which a lot of people run and being able to get higher rolls of this uh, equipment spending less resources is definitely welcome so good thing let us move on so mileage shop the new legendary weapons can be purchased with 100 mileage okay so co-op map this is the new one uh pretty similar to the one line straight line but instead it's a two-way thing so yep then the exiting loot so not gonna cover too much it's a water property so this is probably a fire map so you need to use water heroes which should be quite easy right garam is a very common unit veronica is a very common rate unit so people will have them and that's that okay okay so magiton booster the one that spawns the tower and then uh fascinating button changes from just destroying the enemy to buffing attack by 50 percent while destroying all nearby enemies so good buffs i think they're probably gonna see more because i think the turret itself is uh pretty pretty good idea and skill damage plus 120 percent is quite big it's like literally two times the previous value so really really good and okay so co-op entry change 
Yeah, honestly speaking, they should have done this earlier, dude. Like, honestly, minimum level for challenger increase from level 80 to 83. Like, I, there's so many times where I match with uh, random pups and they are putting in level 80 heroes for the challenger and then they just die first because they don't dodge and stuff. So it, it is. I mean, I have nothing against the player itself, but the thing is they need to set the level such that people who do not spend so much time in the game know that, you know, these levels are not clearable by their levels. So yeah, that's one thing which I love about this uh, entry conditions change. Same thing for the equipments, okay? So not gonna talk too much about it. And number seven is your 24 hour friendly arena matchmaking. So right now, I think one issue with arena is that not a lot of people wants to try it because uh, they don't want to lose, they don't want to lose medals, it's very stressful to play. And right now we do have friendly arena but you have to arrange amongst your group of friends in order to get games so having this friendly arena public matchmaking right make it such that you can actually try out your comp you know like just play against different people without the fear of um, like losing because there's no ranking involved right and you can practice your comps if you want to try some wacky comps or if you're just a content creator that kind of want to make things work and maybe this will be a good thing for you because uh, instead of you know climbing to the top facing the most competitive teams and like the stronger players you are, you're getting like a more casual public matchmaking thing so I, i'm not too sure whether or not this is 100 percent good but as a arena fanatic myself i think this is definitely a good addition because uh, i get to play more if i'm bored if i just want to play some games this is definitely a good thing and beginner mission okay so more beginner missions help all the new players integrate into the game better very very good okay so new guardian points headquarters acquisition not gonna help the old players too much because right now the max level is stuck at 300 so <laughs> getting more points doesn't really matter okay rift dungeon reward improvement okay so in item dungeon so this is for the lower level farming you can get a better uh equipments higher chance of getting epic or higher equipments legend or higher equipments but this is only this only for obtaining items in level 82 or lower dungeons don't know whether or not it will be better for me to try farming the lower dungeons maybe i'll farm the level 84 ones to just see the results maybe it's not that bad maybe not too sure about how this will impact how i want to farm but definitely something to look out for pretty sure somebody will cover it eventually then next we have uh, relaxing content conditions okay okay so just quality of life update okay so reef clearing previously at guardian level 127 is downgraded when got to guardian level 31 so this is for sweeping Okay, exploration work workshops changed to open when world 5 is cleared instead of world 9 if i remember correctly so this is for the newcomers okay new collection other bug and fixes which i'm not going to cover too much okay so these are the packages okay so there's an option change and option lock stone okay commons controller and stamina okay limited time custom package for your merchants and we have a return night event so this is an exclusive event only available for returning nights so if the player have not logged in within the last 14 days right from the 19th of march are eligible to get this event okay so in the case of the mission it has been configured so that knights who have been enjoying garden tales for a long time can fully reproduce the contents once again so as the main rewards we prepared an epic equipment box summoner's controller to help returning knight develop heroes in addition you can acquire goods necessary to nurture heroes such as experience point gold stamina and hero crystals However, this reward has been set so that knight who continuously play the game do not receive a relative disadvantage. Okay. Okay, so this, this event itself is for people who have not been playing the game. If you have left the game, I think this is a pretty good 
way for you to reintegrate back because uh, there's an e epic equipment box. I don't know whether you can pick the equipments. If you can, then that would be good. You can choose like the heroes you want to play and the summoner's controller so that you can summon the latest heroes and get the events. I'm not too sure whether this will trigger the existing players, but you know, it, it, something must be done to bring players back. And I think this is a good event itself. I'm probably not going to get to see this event because unless I stop playing, I think even if I stop, stop playing now, I won't be able to see this event, unfortunately. So like, uh, yeah, I'll see whether or not I have uh, friends or other accounts which haven't been locked in in the last 14 days and just take a look at how this event looks like. So that's that. Okay, so um, road map. Okay, excavation, garden pass, and these are the costumes. So only uh, new costume is uh, Demon Shire's Count Cloud. These are all the returning ones and these are the weapons. So we got the bat, basket, and we have a uh, dark gauntlet. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video. Uh, I'm kind of excited to see how the new defensive support will change the arena meta personally, as well as see whether or not um, Orca in Garum or Water Element in general will be the next big powerhouse for the game itself so thank you very much for watching do remember to like and subscribe to see more videos from the channel and stay tuned